Following the devastating Bastrop fires in 2011, Central Texans want to know what they can do to protect their homes and their property from wildfires. And today, we're going to dive in and talk about that topic. We're joined by Will Bittner, who is a Travis County Fire Marshal, and he ed does a lot of educational outreach for them. And uh, thank you for being here. Thank you, Tom. It's a pleasure. And uh, let's, let's get started by talking about what are the most important strategies. I keep hearing about creating buffer zones around a house. What does that mean? The whole key to the movement of fire from the wildland to the homes is as it moves through the vegetation towards the home. And the defensible space concept is that you create interruptions in that continuous amount of vegetation growing towards your home. So whether that's a, uh, a closely manicured yard or whether it is a garden that has been surrounded by rocks or something, um, what you're trying to do is make sure that if a fire in the woods gets started, it can't make it to your house without interruption. And I understand that vegetation can actually act as a fuse, m meaning it could be lit you can light that fuse out in, in kind of uh, field perimeters or on the edge of the yard, and it can just track the fire right on up to the house. To describe that for us. Well, that's, that's what we call the, the fuel load that is coming across the ground. Mm -hmm. and, and we also bring in the concept of what we call ladder fuels, which is that mm -hmm. you have fuels that are low growers, medium height growers, taller growers, and then you get up into the trees. And frequently what we see in Central Texas is a fire will start, say, on a roadside, and it'll be burning in the grass next to the road that's dry. Mm -hmm. That moves a little further into the woods, and it starts to climb as it burns. And ultimately, it'll climb into things like yopon or uh, some of the holly plants yeah. that are out there. The junipers. The junipers, yes. And it starts roasting the junipers, and then the junipers catch fire. And then ultimately, you can end up with a fast-moving fire that is moving up into the oak trees. Yeah, and, then, and, and from the oak trees to your house as well. Okay. If you have a continuous set of trees moving right up to your house. Yeah, so that's the fuse concept. Is that's the fuse I, concept. People look at a shrub and it uh, may be planted up against their house and think, oh, that's only two feet tall, it won't be a problem if fire happens. What's the reality of that situation? Well, the reality is that the rule of thumb that I always give people, however tall the plant is when it's growing and green, if it's on fire, it's gonna be at least twice as tall and sometimes taller. So if you're comfortable with a six-foot flame in front of your dining room window from your hedge, <laughs> okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it and you imagine that those plants are on fire, imagine what that would look like if you opened your door and looked out. Right. So that, that you're, what you're underscoring here really is the importance of those protective or buffer zones around the house. Yes. And, and what is the what is a safe distance that you would say you know especially I'm, I'm thinking in some of the fire prone areas like the 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 what you know the wooded hillsides of the hill country or things like that well the National Fire Protection Association has a national program called firewise and they have a set of guidelines that we generally try to get people to apply mm -hmm. and the most critical distance from your home is from zero with your back to the wall of the outside of the house out three feet Mm -hmm. So everything is planted in zero to three feet is very, very critical. Okay. So if you have a lot of vegetation or you have a lot of vegetation that is easily ignited, that's something you want to take a look at. Okay. The next is three feet out to 30 feet because okay. research has shown us that direct radiant heat coming off of a big fire more than 30 feet away from a structure may damage the structure, but it seldom actually causes it to ignite. Okay. And then you go from 30 feet out to 100 feet, 100 feet out to 300 feet. Each step mm -hmm. you make, you try to make sure that the fuel loading has been interrupted in some form or fashion or that it's not continuous. Okay. And you know, we've heard, especially in the wake of the Bastrop fires, uh, there was great concern about particular plants like yopon holly or rosemary. What's your advice to homeowners about plant selection? Well, basically, Tom, what I always tell people is you can plant pretty much whatever you really want to plant, but you just have to decide where are you going to plant it. So mm -hmm. in a nutshell, it's not what you plant, but where it is. Right. If you can plant a plant that is relatively easily ignited, but it's 10 or 12 feet away from your home, mm -hmm. or it's in a surrounding, like a, like a, a frame or a, a rock garden or something, and so that if it catches fire, it'll burn just as if it were in a fire pit, and it's mm -hmm. not going to be moving towards your home. All right. So uh, it's not really a matter of which plants, because all plants essentially will burn. Right. All plants burn. Okay. And in many cases, you know, people will say, well, why don't I, why don't I move over to native plants because they're pre-adapted to Texas, and I'm sure that they're really good. Well, it's true. They are pre-adapted because they grew up in a, in a 
in a biome or an environment mm -hmm. where they were either being grazed off by something like the buffalo or the prairie fires were taking them. And because of that, those plants have their growth nodes under the ground and they have a sacrificial upper structure above right. the ground. Mm -hmm. So when they do burn, they burn like a flash bulb going on, they go whoosh. Right. But the bottom part that's in the ground is what allows them to come back year after year. So you can plant native plants, and as a matter of fact, my wife has planted native plants, mm -hmm. and I look at them and I think they're gonna go whoosh, and I'm not particularly worried because they're not gonna go whoosh and set fire to anything else. Fire adapted, like those, so many of the native grasses and other plants, mm -hmm. are not, not fireproof. No, they when, they, when we talk about fire adapted, what we're really talking about is that they will come back after a fire. Mm -hmm. They're not destroyed by the fire. A lot of, uh, like, like for instance, if you think about farmers burning off their row crop fields, mm -hmm. when they burn that field off, the plants do not come back. Mm -hmm. They're not fire adapted. That's why they burn the field to rid themselves of those excess leftover plant material. But in Texas, on the prairies and the hills of Texas, anything that burns off that's native will come back for the most part. Now, you reference the, the kind of the latter effect of fires growing from grass to shrubs, et cetera. Are there some strategies that are m most effective that people can do that are interventions like, uh, you know, clearing out plants of a certain height or raising up the trees or anything along that line? Well, you know, one of, the th one of the great treasures of Central Texas is our oak trees. Yes. And if you look at the oak trees in a natural setting, frequently they will have a lot of vegetation growing underneath of them. And that puts them at a risk from a wildfire. So if you translate that to your home and you have nice oak trees around your home, mm -hmm. but you've let a lot of things, or you have intentionally planted a lot of things underneath that oak tree, you are actually placing that oak tree in peril if that smaller material catches fire and begins to preheat and roast your oak tree, possibly causing it to ignite, but certainly not doing it any good. There is a strategy involved there in, is. Cl there is. in cleaning the brush, maybe raising the oaks, those kinds of things. We recommend raising all the tree canopies as much as you can. Um, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes from an aesthetic standpoint, you're just not going to be able to do it because it's going to make it look like a bunch of lollipops in the front yard. Right. But six feet will, and six feet up on the lower limbs, and low growing material beneath the tree will create enough of a vertical separation that the tree will, will survive a small mm -hmm. fire coming in through there. Um, one of the things that we also talk about is what are called canopy fires. Those are fires that you more, more typically see in the west where you have the big trees and they get, the fire gets up in the top and then it starts to run across the top. Canopy, tri can canopy fires are very difficult to fight as a firefighter. Mm. Now the way you can avoid canopy fires is you can separate your trees so that there's one here, there's one here, they have a distance between them. In many cases, given the kinds of lots people have, given the number of trees that they have, that's not particularly practical. Yeah. So we always have to weigh the risk versus the benefit. And mm -hmm. The benefit of the way your land is gonna look and your property is gonna look versus the risk that you may incur. Okay, well Will, great advice, and in these changing times with extreme climates, very timely advice, we really appreciate you coming on Central Texas Gardener. Well, thank you, Tom. It was a real pleasure. Okay, and coming up next, it's Daphne.